thermal regulation. We spoke about it yesterday night, where some children have very hot bodies or they do not feel the cold. It is a serotonin issue. You need to repair the serotonin function to ensure that the body is at the right temperature. Otherwise, it's a tremendous waste of energy and a use of serotonin that could be taken and used for something else. So, thermal regulation, a huge part of serotonin functions. What is sleep? <laughs> there is a very elaborate and scientific definition here. And we have another one that is even better. So remember what you said, I think, Jean-Marie, yesterday. Can we work on the child's brain during sleep? If you do something that a child is aware of, then you stop the sleep. And we do need that repair. <laughs> Isn't it? So I think yesterday one of you were, was talking about the influence of, of serotonin of, on all the phases of sleep. And my answer was quite simple. Serotonin is in charge of sleep. So all the phases of sleep are taken care of. Like I'm so old that I don't need to sleep at all. <laughs> what phase do you sleep a uh, dream at? Is it four in the deep sleep or is it let's get Where that dream slide? There are in fact different types of dream activity. There are dreams at the end of a phase. These are the ones that you remember vividly. You can tell the whole story and it lasted three hours. It lasted two minutes and a half. And the cleansing system that happens during deep sleep, where the brain is sort of sorting out all the information and making it into a story of some sort, but getting rid of all the extra stress that can, can have happened. Getting clean slate for the morning. Your own physiological, natural cycle. Everybody is a little different. We have an identity, we have a genetic um, marking. So we will respond differently to light, to darkness, to the type of food, the temperature. This is us. You have to respect your child cycle, but you also have to recognize the flaws that the child needs a certain amount of sleep. And very often we find that children who start a treatment, almost the first thing that happens is a change in sleep cycles. They fall asleep earlier and they sleep longer. And I have had parents tell me, if we only got that, I'm happy. <laughs> we briefly touched that yesterday, but I did give you some information about the importance of light and our production of this wonderful playing hormone that we are, which is melatonin. So the way our factory, melatonin factory works, simple and free, you go into daylight. You just take a walk, have a walk with your kid, ensure that there is more time by daylight during the day 
than artificial light. And it just happens. It won't work systematically if your child is low in serotonin, right? But if you have worked on melatonin, your chances to pick and sleep are very high. Now, why do we sleep with such a waste, right? Because I keep on giving you this information and insisting on it during rest, during sleep, is the only time the brain repairs and grows. And we have uh, sort of touched up, if my child was doing nap treatment, do we have to not do other therapies? And the point is more, you do maps to promote growth, then you have to give the time for growth. Let's say we do an exercise for speech. We work on these little hands and we do things, and then I would tell you now, leave him alone, let him do whatever he wants. He will rest, he will play, he will run around the house, he will blow raspberries, whatever. This is what the brain needs to do to grow. But let's say we have a different situation. You do your maths exercises, and then you go into the car, you go to speech therapy which also is going to target those areas of the brain. The brain will not grow if it is asked to work. You can't do both. It takes too much energy, so it won't grow during that time. I'm not saying that session with the therapist is useless, it just, you wasted a good math session because we need the rest of time. <coughs> I'm sorry, so I didn't get the statistics for Australia. Do you sleep well? Okay. Over here, with your head upside down? Yeah. <laughs> I guess we get a lot of sunlight. Oh, it's so hot. Please turn off the, uh, the heating. So, yeah. All oh, right, so the vicious circle that applies to serotonin that applies consequently to every function of, will definitely suffer with a lack of sleep. So besides dying, <laughs> and we just merged, some of the effect of sleep deprivation. So why? Why do you think there are so many consequences to the lack of sleep? It's a logical way adding, putting all the things we have spoken about. Stress, no repair, so you get your old cells doing the job or dying cells. So, for those who have or done sipping their coffee or just start, our last slide was take notes. Observation, make sure that what you feel about the situation is accurate. If you are planning to consult with an expert, whoever that expert is, you need real answers. Not, I think he's never sleeping. Okay, how is that going on? So you really want to be writing things down. So the questions that you ask to yourself, and then you can put down the answers, would be those questions. A simple thing such as, is your child yawning, right? And sometimes I have had sleep, but this child is yawning every half hour. So we'll look at to rest, we'll look at any kind of dysfunction that would be a way of something as simple as the child is not sleeping. And when a parent gets a really serious objective information and observation, realizes, well, this child has maybe two hours of sleep in reality. But for you to see that, you have to be awake, which is not fun. So, if you want to really control 
uh, the information, the objective, write notes, make tables. Thank you. Well, what does it mean is my children snoring? Pardon me? How does snoring affect my children? A lot. Snoring, uh, not every time, not systematically. Snoring ha can cause damage in the speech area. So you don't want to take snoring lightly. It will be one of the questions I would ask if we have a speech delay or something going on in the fine motor area, I will ask you, does your child snore? And sometimes you find it real cute. Yes, he snores a lot and uh, that is a sign of good sleep. Maybe not. So, we don't need to review the virtues and the jobs of serotonin, but if you suffer, your child suffers from insomnia or any sleep disorder, you know that serotonin is in trouble. Well, can I just check, what do you mean hot flashes? Is that hot? It's suddenly being very hot, like the child starts sweating. Oh, it's saying hot flushes. Yes. Right. Okay. I think that's uh, we had a few parents talking about that, having the child suddenly sweating abundantly during sleep, when your body is supposed to be cooler. Like serotonin says, okay, if we are not moving, let's spare energy. We don't need to be that warm. And the body keeps getting warmer and warmer. That's exhausting and that's a sign of serotonin dysfunction. So what can you do today or tomorrow, besides starting a treatment. This is Timothy, Kim's uh, number two. What is an obstacle to good sleep? Give me examples. Incorrect temperature in the room or the bed. That is crucial. The temperature of the room or the bed. You can just not sleep or have very poor quality of sleep with that cause. You can change that. You get a fan, you get a small air conditioning system. You make sure, or you ensure that it's not freezing either. Easier to, to regulate, you just put good pajamas on the kid's socks and you are able to sort of manage cooler temperature. Heat you have you want to be very cautious about the type of food, the amount of fluid. I have heard of uh, parents who would avoid uh, to give too much drink to drink to the child in the evening to avoid incidents where liquid is crucial. We need an abundant amount of fluid in the body constantly. So you need to figure, maybe monitor, we need this amount of water per day. Let's make sure that by this time of the day, the child has had enough fluid. <coughs> the type of food and at what time. The little snacks, the little sugary, lovey snacks. Are they going to help? Are they going to impair? Because digestion is so demanding that it is going to prevent sleep. That is just common sense things that you need to work out also with your kid that has big problems. So simple things need to be addressed first. Colors. <sighs> My big thing about colors. I do home assessments every now and then, and I say, okay, this is gone, this is gone, this is gone, this is gone, and 
The first thing that I have people take out is everything that is red. Why do I do that? Right, there's a mechanical reason for that. It is so well acknowledged, and every time there is something really important for you to know and to see, it is red. Traffic light, stop sign, the little things that are telling you this is poisonous or keep out of the hands of children. Important information that people need you to see right away are red. So red is certainly a, a fun color, an interesting color. It is an exhausting color and it will cause aggravation. I have an anecdote and it happened in a seminar just like that where a lady starts to get really fidgety and she says, I have to go home and paint my house. Everything is red. <laughs> the walls, the rugs, the furniture, the bedspread. The husband is a firefighter. They just all have a passion for red. <laughs> but husband has a very severe anger management problem. He needs medication. Son is severely agitated. So the seminar lasts several days. So the next time she comes, she says, well, I, I painted the den in blue. Guess what? The two men are in there. They spend the day, they took their computers in there and they want to stay in that room. So if you try it, and we have somebody who's so sweet and volunteered to dress up in red. I almost did it. I have this beautiful red shirt that I really like. I said to him, well, should I put this one today? And he said, yeah, for the red seminar. If you close your eyes and open them, what is the first thing that you're going to be looking at? This lovely lady. <laughs> <laughs> Except for Chad. <laughs> Where is she? You just cannot help it. It's not something that you can decide. So it's true for your child. The number of toys go to your child's room or into the therapy room and observe how many things are red. Uh huh. <laughs> that makes a lot of cleanup to do. Don't dare to change the environment before it comes over there. No, 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 no. I'm not supposed to keep on it. Uh huh. Yeah. <laughs> I'm already frightened. <laughs> so, you can do that today. You take a garbage bag. You, I'm not saying you throw them, right? You give them to Salvation Army or something. They're pretty toys usually. Good quality. Take them away. Then get out of the room, come back in, and you will go, ah. Every piece of information that's read is taking so much of your energy that as soon as it's gone, yourself and the child will be so much more rested. So if you need to paint the room again, just go to Target or wherever you get the paint and pick anything but red. Orange is wonderful. It is a mix of red, but it is a wonderful, um, wonderfully relaxing color, pink light blue, anything. No dark, no black because it's not even a color. White is great because you can put art and it will be well seen. But this is changing the environment for the better to prepare for the rest to happen. This is something that you can do right away, as soon as you come back. Uh, when parents start the treatment, one of the things I say is, Starting today, you stop saying no for everything that is not life-threatening or illegal. Okay? So, then you get home and you go, wow, I was saying no a lot. When you say no because the child is uh, jumping on the table and dancing, who is going to die? Nobody? 
that it be. Because, and exactly the comment Chad made, my conviction and my experience is it will pass. If you say no to everything that is fun and exciting and you hate, uh, you cause stress to the child and you damage my treatment. So lift off. Stay, make sure that when you say no, it's because somebody is going to be in great danger. Otherwise, eh, uh, start scribbling on the walls. We'll paint later. Not that the child has every right. We are in a hospital setting mode now. We don't have the same rules. We have a point, we have a target. We are going to succeed. We need to be changing things like a septic language. Not, no negativity if it's not mandatory. Some parents just hate me. And that's okay. <laughs> Questions on that? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, uh, the um, adult carers in our household have um, boundaries in place to protect them from their health issues, which I recognize now as pretty much all low serotonin issues. And uh, these boundaries are there um, that so that you know the child with challenges, so to speak, um, butts up to the, the boundary that the adult parent doesn't fall apart on the other side of that. So, um, what do you suggest in those situations where essentially the adult parents don't have the capacity to meet the challenges of the child and therefore the boundaries in place in order to? protect both really. Mm -hmm. Well, the setting that is put in place is there because there is not a hope there will be a change. So it has to be structured and I respect that. It would have to be a consensus to lift enough to give back freedom and independence to the person without causing harm. They are adults, they can hurt. So this is where a lot of no's are mandatory. A lot of rules are needed because uh, there is a danger. So it's education of the group, of the staff, and then gradually seeing the setting, how can we change how the furniture that puts, the colors or the, or the objects very often you have things on the wall, plastered, posters of any form uh, that may be just causing aggravation. There are, can be things that can be done right away that are small, but will make a big difference. It's a different case scenario. If I can, I create the perfect group home, the same way I'm going to when they create the perfect school, where you don't need to say no because Things are set in that way, but good luck. <laughs> it's a lot of work. Well, we have only now the perfect answer. And Chad gave it. You must have checked my slides before. All right. Having this organization, those forty cars, are part of. Okay. Bedtime routine, we do that, then we do that, then we do that, and we go to bed. It works. And I'm pretty sure the majority of you have created those routines. If you haven't, make them up. It doesn't matter what kind of routines, as long as you respect the schedule that helps to wind down. And we have our spa treatment in the, in the treatment. We have all these things that prepare for serotonin increase, and rhythm of the day. That is a question that comes every now and then, whatever the age of the child, how good is it to sleep with mom and dad? And there is a, a quote, some um, people say in one of the countries in Africa, if a child has not slept under the cover with mom and dad, 
the child will never be done, will never be complete. I love it. I think it's really cute. If you have a very big bed and it doesn't prevent you from sleeping, that is a nice option sometimes for nightmares and for sleep. So that's a question that comes every now and then. So I have a slide for it. Now we come into the next level of action. We have come into the bedroom, we have made the drastic changes, colors, uh, temperature, change, thing that can be done instantly. Then we move into putting a dimension to the sleep. We want smells. We saw one of the worksheets. You will always see on the worksheet for yourself or your child, scent on the pillow, just in case you forget. We put the scent on the pillow. And I explained to you why, because dopamine works during sleep, we can increase dopamine when we sleep. That is so simple. Just to, because we talk about dopamine, do you want to get up in the morning with twice the dopamine you had when you went to bed? Of course you do. So for exhausted parents, put a scent on your pillow. Spot treatment. I will do it really briefly here because I'm going to explain to you how to do spot treatment tomorrow. It is just ultimate pleasure. And whatever you comes to your mind when you think spa, that's what we do to the children. The hot bath style. They just don't want to think about anything. <clears throat> just in case you have forgotten. And again, the relationship between sleep and serotonin. So the activity, we ha I have been so disorganized that I made you smell so much or do things during the seminar. So right now, just take your smell, close your eyes, and take a deep smell. Those who don't have one are guilty. <laughs> they can go and get one from Grace or borrow the one from their neighbor, and Kim has stolen my lemon. <laughs> get that serotonin and that dopamine up. <laughs> The wonderful power of touch. We have done gentle fall and smell. The, one of the first key to the increase of serotonin and to good sleep is the sense of touch. We do have all the key exercises that will promote good sleep. We have them, you do them. A lot of them will involve the sense of touch. And that will be touch with the foot, touch with the neck, touch with the fingertips. We have a variety of them and you will have quite a few of them in your treatment for anxiety. Using your sense of touch is easy, Right, you have it. The, the deal is you have your worksheet, your check mark, and you just do the things. We spoke about music. What kind of music? Yes. I sometimes parents would ask me, okay, what about birds, waterfalls? And they may not always be relaxing for your child. For waterfall to feel relaxing, you need to have a good memory of it, mm -hmm. a good mental image of that. Maybe hear all, hearing all this water would be frightening. So we know the impact of music. Let's use music. We are good and safe with that. You 
can have your child pick. pick what, which one do you like? This one or this one? It's not music or not. That's not the option. Um, Chloe, can I ask a question just about the music? Um, I know some people that, that love to have music when they fall asleep. <laughs> it's almost like they focus on that and it quiet, quiet, quietens their mind. Yeah. Other people like myself, um, it does the opposite. It actually, if I hear the music, I think, and then, you know, and, I, and so I can't go to sleep if there's um, music, unless I'm really drunk or something like that. But uh, do you, I mean, do you find that some people respond differently yes, than others? Yes, absolutely. I find that for music, and I find that also for the spa treatment, where parents say, he's all energized now, I can't put him to bed. Okay, do it at lunchtime. You want a certain amount of music or quality auditory processing every day. You need it. So if it doesn't help you fall asleep, do it. Uh, midnight uh, break, looking at the stars, it doesn't matter. I cannot really fall asleep without my beautiful piece of music. Because I, it just gets my serotonin up right away. For you, it probably increases serotonin and dopamine so much it, okay, I need to write a book now. <laughs> so you need to do it. You just pick the right moment. Okay.